right? It seems that they're removing themselves, but I'm going to prove to you that it's not totally. Whereas the Tan Aviram Yatsu Nitzavim, they're standing there erect, meaning blaspheming, this arguing, and who's with them? Nishehem, their wives, Uvneem, last word of the Pasuk. Vitapam, and they're tough, and they're children. That's what they're. And then Moshe, as we learned the end of yesterday, sure, makes a daring remark. Very sharp. You're going to know that I'm not making up the appointment of Kohen Gadol by myself to my brother. Bezoteidun, with this you're going to know that what? Ki Hashem Shlachani. I'm reading Pasuk 28. It's clear that God is the one that sent me to do all these things. It's not my it's not my imagination from my heart. And then he talks about if these people are going to die a regular natural death, then you know that God didn't send to me. But if you know that what? Something bombastic will happen. In verse 30, a new creation will be created by God. Then you know that it's going to happen from God and it's not my idea, the entire matter. When we're examining these psukim, it seems that the people maybe are doing tshuva, moving away from Datan and Aviram, moving away from Korach. However, skip please. Pasperik Yud Zayin, chapter 17, which we'll get to part of today. Perik Yud Zayin, chapter, next chapter. And see, please, Pasuk 6. Pasuk Vav. Everyone see the Hebrew as well, please. Put your eyes on it. Vayilonu kol adat b'nei Yisrael mimocharat. After a good night's sleep, mimocharat, the day afterwards, there's nothing like, not just a cup of coffee in the morning, but there's nothing like a good argument, a good machloket, to disagree against Moshe and against Aaron. Gentlemen, the same people... <laughs> that we're rallying support to see what's going to be the end result. Will the end result be like Korach or will it be like Moshe? And now they're warned, Vayalu, get out of here. Apparently, they didn't go too far, at least spiritually, at least mentally. Okay? Nechama Levitz also has a wonderful article on this point here. When they are going away, let's go back to Pasuk 27, we just said, it could be physically, bodily, they're moving elsewhere. And they're fearful maybe of an upcoming punishment. But it's not going to be an emotional, intellectual, or spiritual distance. They're not distancing themselves from the evil. Okay? They're not separating themselves finally from the machloket. Later on, we're going to see a prohibition. That if you're in a machloket... Argument against someone. Don't remain in argument. Try to make a settlement. There's a mitzvah. It's a negative prohibition. Don't prolong the argument. Settle it. Don't leave it unsettled. Don't have this dispute ongoing. It seems here they're not separating themselves finally from Korach and from the entire rebellion. What about Shem Shemayim? The Shem Shemayim. You're, excuse me. You're going up against Moshe Rabbeinu. Who is Moshe Rabbeinu? He's not just another Yossi in the market. He's not just even another teacher or rabbi. He is the only one that's given the title Rabbeinu. Without Moshe Rabbeinu and his prophecy, there's no Torah in the world. In the world! Lokam Yisrael ke Moshe od. Who said that? Thank you, Amos. Lo kam bi Yisrael ke Moshe. Never ever will there ever be someone like Moshe. The Rambam explains in his intro to his commentary on the Mishnah. When he talks about prophecy, and of course when you want to learn about Mishnah, you have to learn about prophecy. There's no oral Torah if Moshe Rabbeinu didn't get prophecy. Forty days and forty nights, Hashem is drilling him. All the oral Torah laws. All the Yud Gimel Midot Shatoran Nidrashet Bam. 
All the 13 principles by which we can take apart, decipher the oral Torah laws from the text. All the accepted understandings of Psukim. All the ways that we can arrive to halachic conclusions. Or given the halachic conclusion, now you go find where the source is in the Torah. And so on and so forth. Moshe Rabbeinu. His nevuah allows us to receive the Torah, the oral Torah. The Brit of Torah, the covenant, is like the prophet Yermio says, quote, Im lo briti yomam shamayim Had it not been for my covenant of day and night, what is day and night? The study of Torah day and night. Some of you are full-time students, should be studying in the evening. In the Beit Midrash or in Shur, one of the two. Right? If it would not be for the Torah study, by the way, if you study during the day, you don't study during the night, you didn't complete the mitzvah of studying Torah. Even at night time. You're not a pumpkin, you have to go inside at, at night or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you learn Torah at night. So had it not been for the, the Brit of the Torah study day and night, I wouldn't have created the world. Chukot Shemayim Varet, the statutes of heaven and earth, the laws of gravity, physics, I would have not have created. Moshe Rabbeinu is not just anyone, he's our Rabbeinu, he's our rabbi, our authority, our teacher. How dare you, Korach? How dare you, Natan and Aviron, go up against the Moshe Rabbeinu? He's not, your, he's not on your level. Even Miriam, when she did, she wanted to talk good. And poor thing, you, Mrs. Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, see, poor, poor thing. She's always alone. Always alone. <gasps> Don't speak bad. Even if she had good intention. So to go up against Moshe Rabbeinu is not. There are ways you want to differ. I'm going to share with my rabbi. Slicha Rav, I didn't understand. I thought it was otherwise. You don't come and say, Rav, you made a mistake. Gemara 110, Sanhedrin, side one. When the Tanan Aviram and Korach and their cohorts are different going up against Moshe Rabbeinu, okay, he brings it. Why do you think God says you're all obligated? Finito. You're all obligated Klayat to be wiped out. Because the Gemara says, maybe you saw it, Raphael, call ha- Rabbi Avo, call Ameharher Achare Rabo. Anyone that's suspecting that his teacher is doing a wrongdoing, Kimo Meharher Achare Ashkina. My Rebbe is God's agent, conduit. He's my Moshe Rabbeinu. When I go to Shur, I learn Torah from my Rabbanim. He's like my Moshe Rabbeinu. Through him, I'm getting Torah. Sometimes I get these emails. Yeah, I, I have a lot of exposure. Learn. I've been learning Torah on the internet. Can I please? Or can I convert? And say, Look, Torah is not an internet thing. Torah is learning with your Rebbe. Being with him. Praying with him. Eating with him. Walking with him at the beach. Going to be, learn, see what Torah is. Torah is not just a bait midrash. It's learning what, 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 what an individual, what his great midot are. I'm not talking about myself, obviously. How special he is, his, 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 his humility, his fear of heaven, his love of Torah. You have to see that. It's not on internet. You can't see that on internet. You have to live Torah. Ki heim chayeinu v'orech yameinu. In the second blessing of the evening Shema. It's chayim. Torah is life. We're not a religion, guys. Whoever thinks a religion, close the book and get out of here. Right now. We're not a religion. We don't just come into whatever room here. And ooh, and just, we live a life. You're waiting on the line for bakery. It's Torah. You're waiting on the line for, to buy something and your, your behavior, your speech, that's Torah. You're in reserve duty. You're working your company. How do you speak? How do you behave? What you say and what you do not say. How you stifle yourself before you blow up because you're really angry? Or how you don't stifle yourself? Ah, you made a mistake? You can correct it's never too late to correct. Someone just sent me a message about an hour ago. And he told me about a mess up. And he left me the vocal message. And he said, it was my wife that made the mess up. I gave it to him. I said, don't ever say that. Tell your wife it was us that we made the mistake. Or you made Don't ever say she made the mistake. Don't blame her. You're going to give her a guilt complex for the rest of her life? Who, who did that? Adam Arishon. Eh, she, she's the one that caused me to sin. I don't even care if it's right. 
Don't blame your wife. Work on your middot. Get back here. So someone that's different on Moshe Rabbeinu is like going up against the Shechina. That's the problem here. You think Korach, you're a Moshe Rabbeinu. You don't understand the Madre Gott. And Datan and Aviram, they made the obvious mistake. Eretz Mitzrayim is a what? Eretz Zavat? Beautiful. Eretz Zavat Chalav Udvash. Wow. You're not making any dif differentiation between Eretz Mitzrayim and Eretz Yisrael. There's only one Eretz Zavat Chalav Udvash. Nachon? Eretz Zavat Chalav Udvash is not Peking, not Beijing, is not Hong Kong. It's only Eretz Yisrael flowing with milk and honey. There's no other place in the world. So, gentlemen, these people maybe make themselves distant from the house, the Mishkan of Kor Aviram, but they're not learning too much of a lesson. We're going to have to think about that. Why? I'm not going to answer it now today. We saw the opening up of the earth. Who dies in the opening of the earth? Korach, Tatan, Vaviram. And? All their people related to them. And where do we see that in repetition in the book of Bamidbar? Pinchas, chapter? 26. Very good. 26, 6 did you say? Or 7? 7. 6. 10. Okay, say that. Let it be. Okay, you see it there. And then, let's read Pasuk 33. After they and all their rechush, all their properties, their wealth. Korach was dirty rich. Did you know that Chazal talk about? He was wealthy, very wealthy person. All of the wealth, down the drain. Pasuk Lamed Gimel. Vayirdu heim. They're going down the Chol Asher Lem. Chaim, alive. Shola, 33. Shola, into this bottomless pit. Please explain the next three words. Vatichas alehem haaretz. I repeat those three words. Vatichas alehem haaretz. And then it says, Vayovdu mitocha kahal. The earth what? And everyone's falling in. The earth closed itself. It opened itself and it closed itself. No one can be saved. You can't throw in a uh, life raft or whatever, a, uh, a rope and so on and so forth. Can something happen this past Shabbos? I read a, a, a small article. A father and a son fell into this large pit 15 meters down. Ah, uh, no. A son fell into this large pit 15 meters. It's a lot, isn't it? I think I read it was 15 minutes. Maybe I'm making a mistake. And then the father tried to get a ladder to go down there, and the ladder broke because he was down there as well. Five-year-old kid ran to get help. They brought the rescue teams, and thank God they saved the, the father and the son and the virtue of the, uh, the young son, the young boy that ran to get help. Here, you can't bring help. You can't put a ladder down there. Why? The chasot, there's close stuff. You're watching this. You're, this is big news in the middle of the desert. The camp of Korach, Datan, and Aviram. Korach is in the Levi area. Datan, they're all together, opens and closes. Who knows how many hundreds of people, not their kids. We talked about uh, the children of Korach, the Tshuva. Right? We repeated that yesterday. Remember, gentlemen, the children of Korach were tzaddikim. They didn't go for what their father wanted to happen. And that's why King David writes a psalm after about them. And that we said on the Rav Kleiman used to say, he would often say that on Rosh Hashanah, that uh, on the holiest day, right before this holy mitzvah of hearing the shofar, we read about tshuva. Of that psalm, I don't remember what number it is, maybe you don't, gentlemen. Lam Natsach, Levne Korch, we even do, in the Ashkenazi people read it seven times, even, right? We read that Mizmor even seven times. You know what I'm talking about? That's the Mizmor we read right before blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah day about the B'nai Korach, the children of Korach. What do you want to ask a question, Mr. Ramos? My question is uh, did the, it was a, the Hashem shows the Moshe this? Uh, 
So he says, Kilomi libi, it's not my, it's not for me. This is apparently Hashem prophesied Moshe Rabbeinu and told him, Go dare them and do this and this, and I'm gonna, this is what's gonna happen. We're seeing so many miracles happening here, one after the other. Do you see my eyeglasses? Would you please remind me at the end of the show to take them? I'm not too accustomed to taking glasses. I've been wearing for who knows how many, 40 or 50 years. Mm -hmm. You're laughing at no, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen. I've, I've gone through so many, <laughs> like dozens. <laughs> I can't do this. I, I, I drove here without the eyeglasses. Thank God I can still see the cars and the colors in front of me. Gentlemen, what's happening in the Mishkan? Our correspondent for the Mishkan activities. It says here, as people are running away for their lives in Lamed Dalet, V'chol Yisrael, Asher Svivotem, all the people around that area, Nasu! What is Lanus? They're escaping. Lekolam with their voices. They hear, hey, when you're being swallowed up in the ground, what do you think? People are terrified. They're screaming. So you hear all these terrifying screams. So everyone else is fleeing, getting away. Who knows? Will the earth open up next to us as well? Ki Amru, they said, Pentiv La'enu Arts, maybe the land will swallow us up as well. And now we come to the last Pasuk of the chapter, Lamed Hay 35, and what's going on in the Mishkan? Ve'esh Yatsa Me'et Hashem. I'm going to ask you, where is it specifically? And the result is, Vatochal, it devoured, it consumed, eight. Capital letters, hachamishim umatayim ish, makrivea ketoret. A fire came, and I'm asking where, from where? And second, who did it consume? And therefore, as a result, who did it not consume? So let's, let's, let's go f last first and first last. Who is the fire and consuming? And not, and not, and Korach, not Korach, and not. Right? They're gonna die. They died. They died in a different punishment. Did it, did it purely die, or is, it, is there any opinion that this? That no, it's, it's, we said in Bar Midbar twenty six. It, okay. it says it clearly. What's not stated here? Okay. Why two different punishments? Why is it fire? Why didn't the Tan and Aviram? include themselves in bringing. So we answered that question yesterday. The Tan of Ram, I really have no intention to get spiritually close to God. They're just looking to, for a good argument in the morning after a nice cup of coffee, right? I, we like to differ against Moshe Rabbeinu. So they're not, they're not interested in spiritual heights. The 250, as the Nitziv Olajan explains and others, they really wanted to get close to God. And they really did bring their incense offering on their machta. And why is this their punishment? Ve'esh yatsa me'et Hashem. What does it mean that the fire came out from God? What does it mean, ve'esh yatsa me'et Hashem? Huh? It came down from heaven. It came through the Kodesh, Kodesh, that's me'et Hashem, and then went into the... Again, it Hashem, maybe from heaven right into the Holy of Holies and then into the Kodesh, because in the Kodesh is the the Ketoret altar, Mizbeach, and here they're burnt, they're consumed. Immediate association. Oh, with the sons of... Uh, Nadav and Aviyu. Nadav and Aviyu. What do we understand about this punishment? What do we understand? Boundaries. You have to have boundaries, that's right. Otherwise you're going to be zapped. But what is the fire coming to teach me? What, is it, what message is it giving me about these 250? They were burnt. And the others, the earth opened up its mouth. So what is the connect? What is the Mida connected Mida, gentlemen? The fire came because they approached Hashem in a way that they shouldn't have. You can't feed yourself to something like that in an improper way. The, the natural consequence is just to be burned away. That's one part. That they try to burn incest. They try to use fire. Midah, keneged, midah. They went over the borders. But what else 
It's coming from God. Me'it yeah. Hashem. I know the opening of the earth is coming from God. But look, use your power of imagination and thought to be, have the earth open its mouth and swallow you as opposed to have fire coming from God and burning you. What do you see in this, Amos? I see like two different because the fire, is, it already happens before we just sons of Aaron. And that's something which, which what was created, but this is something uncreated before. It's something very unusual. It's only happened once, and it's like giving the, the real stamps, like, this is me. Uh, okay, this maybe, is maybe. It's also me, but I mean, like, this is something which is following the rules that we never do the things which... which okay, so that's what Rafael said. What else, what you want to add there, Eliav? Want to add something? I don't know, maybe they wanted to receive, it, like, a hand of Nebua. And also the fire is uh, compared with the Nabua, so they wanted to have a different approach to Hashem. Torah is fire. It's compared to fire, closeness to God. They wanted to get close to God. Therefore, what? I'm looking for an additional point that you're all thinking beautifully. Michael, Arye? Yeah, because uh, what you say, like they want to get close to Hashem. But also like in the Torah, you see like the, the fire is the element about kashering and stuff. So maybe it's like they did the shuva, but they, they disappeared. But it's, it's like the tertikun or something. Okay, maybe Raphael. Also, the earth swallowing, they didn't die before they were swallowed. They were separated from the people and then they died. The fire, they were killed while still part of the koan. They were still part of the people when they died. Okay, you're all saying beautiful points. I want to bring your attention that it says, Ve'esh yatsa me'et Hashem. It came from God. That's kavod. That's honor. In other words, we don't say, well, it doesn't make it. You die, you die. No, we're not saying that. Yeah. The Torah bothered to write. <laughs> the Esh Yatza Me'et Hashem. Close. Closer to Hashem. In the last breath. My dear friends, like Nadav and Avihu brought a wrong fire, they did it not out of going up against Moshe vehemently, animalistically, Arrogance. They saw the kuhuna as a way to get close to God. They made a grave mistake, but out of love of God, not going up against Moshe Rabbein, love of God, they were excited to bring up a ketoret. And they went in with the love of God. But you know what? You're past the red line. There's a red line there. There's a mitzvah lo ta'aseh, a negative commandment. You can't bring your ketor. But they had the chance. They made a grave mistake, but they were killed from the fire of God as if it was something honorful, something revered, something so great. In other words, eh, we see that their intentions were positive intentions. You can have positive intentions, but you have to know what to do. Remember, the king of Kuzuri has these reoccurring dreams. Mm -hmm. Your intentions are good, but your actions are not good. They had positive intentions. Korach? Negative. Datan and Aviram? Negative. It's like animalistic. Can I use you, please, right now to uh, demonstrate something? Do you have a big mouth? Come on. It sounds big, but it's not physically big. I would like you to open up your mouth as large as possible. As if you're the... Yeah, that's right. Watch this. As you're, you're the earth. You see his mouth? It looks very animalistic, doesn't it? Yes or no? <laughs> Just close it now. Everyone got swallowed up inside his mouth. He was the earth. It's the Nitziv. What I'm explaining now with you gentlemen is the Nitziv. Rav Natali Tzuyu the Berlin. Right? The Nitziv of Elijah, in his great commentary. It's as if... Because of their animalistic doings, the earth, like animalistically, opened up its mouth and swallowed them and closed up. Whereas the honor of God, the fire coming from Hashem, burnt the 250 people. But they made a mistake. They desecrated God's name and therefore they're dying. But they did it out of love. This is a way to explain the difference of opinion of uh, the, the different two punishments, okay? Uh, Mr. Uh, Misayo. Uh, um, I'll tell you about the Midrash. Mm. Korach 
at first was not he never had any negative thoughts about Moshe Rabbeinu in our life. But it was his wife that convinced him that you being Gemara 110, side one. You can you can read a series of Gemarot. If you're on the bus today, hope you're not in the Beit Midrash. A series of Gemarot. We don't have the time to get into it, of, of, of the events that are happening behind the scenes in the Midrash. Whereas the wife of uh, Owen Ben Pellet, she put a play on and she uncovered her headgear in front of all these Haredi re religious people. And when they came to call, come on, we're going to the demonstration. And when she saw that, she took off her, her shaitol or she took off her head cover. Oh, no, no. <laughs> we don't want to see a woman without her head cover. I think Rav the Gun usually gives that explanation. Let's go now to the next chapter with, with the time that we have. Perak Yud Zayin, chapter 17, gentlemen. Okay. Wow. Imagine being in a desert. Some, what a bombastic day. What a, a fiery day. Fire, earthquakes, opening up and closing. What's going on? Uh, where's our correspondent for the Mishkan? Uh, what do we have inside the Kodesh? A lot of dead people and a lot of uh, pans that were used for? Weren't their corpses gone? They were, so, they were burned to nothing. It's just the pans, right? Maybe. Uh, it's not clear. It's a good point. We can assume. We could assume so. <laughs> Something smoky smells here, right? <laughs> Something smoky. Let's read. Vaydaber Adonai El Moshe Leimor Perik Yudzayin verse two. Emor El Elazar Ben Arona Kohen. Hmm. El Azar. Gee, I know who El Azar is. Viaremet Amachtot. He has to go in and lift up the Machtot. Mi Bein Asrefa of the burning there. Maybe Asrefa refers to the people that are burnt. That's how the Rav Sajigon explains. Maybe they, they, their bodies are there, but uh, toasted. And he says, Mi the people that are burnt there. That's what Rav Sajigon says. I'm continuing. What if to, what if to raise them up? V'ta'esh. The gechalim. The coals. Zrei hala. What should you do? You're a firefighter. What do you do with the fire now? The fire's still going on there, as we see. Zrei hala. What should you do? Disperse it going on. Don't let it stay there. Why? Ki Kadeshu. So we have two things to explain here. Number one, why, do, why is Elazar given the role to do? And what does it mean, Ki Kadeshu? Is, shouldn't the Torah say, Ki Kedoshim? Aren't they holy? What is Kadeshu referring to? Who told you it means Ki Kadeshu? Say Kedoshim. Are the pe is it talking about the people or is it talking about the machtot? So, gentlemen, let's now better understand. Mr. Elazar, okay, the son of, he is the deputy in charge of all the loads, okay, all the loads regarding the Mizbeach. He, in particular, is in charge of carrying, transporting the matters of the Mizbeach. So therefore, he's given, since it's the area of the Mizbeach, he's given the responsibility, prophetically, from God through Moshe, to pick up the machtot, the machtot of whom? Of the 250 people that offered the what? Which is like an Eish Zara, and it says Ki Kadeshu. It doesn't say Kiddoshim. Okay? The fire on the Mizbeach was holy. But you know what happened? The Machtot. What Kalim can you use inside the Mishkan? What vessels can you use inside the Holy Temple? Vessels that were dedicated, that were distinguished to become holy and used for holy purposes, and they're usually anointed with anointing oil. What happens if you use a vessel inside the Mishkan or the Beit HaMikdash and you use it for a wrong, a violation? What happens to the holiness of the Kli? That's right. What, what word do we use in the Torah? Kadeshu is not what you think became holy. Kadeshu means nitchalilu. They became profaned. They were used for an unholy thing. In other words, the machtot are now chol and not 
Kadosh. Is it clear to you? Hamavdil ben Kodesh. Until now, the machtot, the fire pans, were Kedoshim. They were holy. They were designated for holy purpose. But when you use something holy for a wrong purpose, a violation, the machtot become... You're in charge. How are you, sir? You're in charge of the Kodesh, aren't you? Are you willing to have unholy vessels inside the... You're not. Uh, this is the... So you see, Hashem is commanding Moshe to get rid of them, take them out. We don't want unholy things inside the Kodesh. These machtot are unholy. Eight, God continues the instruction in Pasagimel. He specifies, machtot hachataim ha'ele benafshotam. Wow. Here, we're proving the point that we said before. These holy Jews, 250 heads of Sanhedrin, saw the priesthood as a means to get closer to God. These are the machtot of hachataim ha'el. Excuse me? Does it say chotim? Or does it say chataim? It says chataim or chotim? Chataim. It doesn't say Chotim. Your Hebrew is good. Yeah, you with the kippah. What would Chotim mean? The sinners. Chataim are people that did sins, but they're not called Chotim. If I call you, you're a Chote. Doesn't mean you do it once in a while. You're often. Okay. Chotim are people that are generally doing sins. Okay. Chotim, Ratzim, runners, eh, Kotvim, writers. So the Torah doesn't say Chotim. Was these 250 people really are not Chotim? They randomly sin. And they're not called Chotim. Now, how did they do a Chet? B'naf What does it mean they did a sin with B'naf Shotam? The Netzev of Elijah says they gave up their lives. We call that in Hebrew, Mesirut. They gave up their lives. Do you know who has the ability to give up Mesirut Nefesh? The Hasidim of the generation. The saintly. Not every Jew is so ready. Many of our youngsters, 18 and 19 years old and more, in the army of, of Israel, they're willing to give up their lives for us. They're like Hasidim. Don't look to see if they have a keeper or not. They're very holy Jews. Many of them are willing to give up their lives for our benefit. These 250 people, the Nitzvah legend says, they were the Hasidim of the generation. They sinned and they wanted to die by doing the violation of bringing the Torah, which is really a mitzvah lo ta'aseh. So that's what it means. They're the Chataima Ela bin Naf Shotam. They gave up their nefesh. They gave up their lives. Positive and not positive. It's great that they want to get close to God. But we have a guideline book. What's the name of that book? Torah. Ah, the Torah. We have a guideline book of what and what not. And they violated. They took the daring of Moshe Rabbeinu. Come, come tomorrow. Again, we saw two meanings yesterday. Was it tomorrow? They already came early before. Let's leave that alone right now. So now, Elazar is now commanded to go in and remove the machtot of the chataim and not the chotim. These 250 people gave up their lives because they love God and they violated it. They violated it and therefore they were lost. And now what do I want you to do? Vausuotam. I want you to make out of these machtot rikuei fachim. Lirakea is the verb often used when you're taking a metal and you're slicing it very thin. I don't know the verb they use here in your Hebrew English chumash. Beaten plates. Beaten plates? Yeah. Okay. You're, okay, you're going to make, I think, sheets of metal from the machtas, probably made out of which metal, gentlemen? Brass, I think. I think Nechoshet as well, I think. Made out of Nechoshet. It's a, is it a strong metal, Nechoshet? Brass? It's soft? Can it, take, uh, can it take the heat of charcoals? Yes? It's what, Amos? It's good. 
So that's why God usually commanded to make the fire pens out of Nechosha. What do you want to say? Uh, no, no, it's fine. No, I was thinking it was copper, but okay. Okay. What's the difference between copper and brass? Is there a difference? Yeah, yeah brass is tin. Brass is made out of copper. copper. Yeah. Copper. So I think that, so that we, maybe we should use the word copper. The yeah. Nechoshet is copper? Yeah, so Nechoshet is copper. Okay, I, I'm mistaken. Okay, and thank you, Arye. Very good. God wants now to use the machtot as a tzipoy la mizbech. Repeat those two words. Tzipoy. Chocolate. What's mitzupe mean? Coated. Covered. Okay? God wants... Use those metals that were profane, those machtot, as a coating to the Mizbech. Why? Because they served before God. And they were profane. So God wants a warning signal for the rest of the generations. He wants an oat, a symbol that other people will see and learn what not to do. Let's keep on reading quickly and then we'll get to your questions. What do you think? It'll be a symbol for who and where? If you haven't read this. It'll be a symbol for who and where? This coding of the Mizbeach. It'll be a symbol for B'nai Israel to do what or not to do what? Don't bring the Ketorit offering unless you're a Kohen Etzchova. What else? Not to rebel against. Don't be a member of the Korach Society. Limited. Uh, you don't want to join the Korach Society. Now, Thomas, just you and me. One on one. If you were God, which Mizbech are you ordering? to coat, to cover. Think. One second. Where did it happen? In the Kodesh. I'm examining you again. Which Mizbech do you want this metals to be used to as a covering of the walls? Because nobody, uh, uh, only the Kohanim can see the one inside. Beautiful. Very nice. Kol HaKavod, Tavish HaKoch, Yosemot. Gold, and now you put oh, that's another reason. Paper. Very nice, David. It doesn't look very well. Um, <laughs> I'm so proud of I'm, my students. Are thinking, you're thinking beautifully. You're thinking like Torah. Fantastic. Keep on the great study. So it's going to have to be outside, which is open to the public. Right? We go up the steps, 15 steps, and we're now still in Ezrat Yisrael, and a few steps in is Ezrat Kohen, and we can see the Mizbech in front of us. If the wall of the Mizbech will be coated with this uh, Nechoshet, and we can see that it's slabbed on there, then we're going to remember, let's read the rest of the Pesukim and hear what you want to say. So let's see, Pesuk Dalet in hey, verse 4 and 5, Ve'yikach Elezar Kohen, et machtot he takes them, asher ikrivo asrufim, the people that did the sins, they're called srufim, the ones that were burnt. So I think uh, their bodies are still there, maybe. Ve'yirake'um, he beats it, you said, tzipuy mizbeach. And this is a zikaron, a memorial. Levnei Yisrael, leman asher lo yikrav ish zar, an ish zar, a foreigner. Asher lo mizer aronu, that he's not from the family of Aron. Laktir ketorah the finesha, he can't do it. That's what I remember. That's sign or memorial number one. Sign or memorial number two. Velo yachikorach v'chadato. Here's the negative prohibition. Don't behave. Don't maintain yourself in an argument like Korach did and his Eida. Kasher di Hashem biad Moshelo. So my dear friends, it seems that there's a very special sign and memorial for the Jewish people that a non-Kohen may not bring a Ketorah offering. And therefore, uh, that there's like two memorials, two memorials, two signs. One, don't bring a, a, a non-Kohen may not bring a Ketorah offering. And number two, don't behave like the disgraceful way of Korach. Okay? Now, it's interesting. I want to make one point, then hear your questions. In spite of the fact that these Jews, these 250 members of leaders of Sanhedrin, despite the fact that they sinned, God is giving them honor. God is not disgracing them. 
I'm going to use, utilize what you did wrongly, what you violated. I'm going to use it as a tzipoy, according to the Mizbech and these sheets of metal on the, on the walls of the 250 people. That's an interesting thing because they really had good intentions. So we're going to make use out of these things. Questions, Rafael, number one, and then... Sure, then back. First, why do we say that they were inside of the tent? Because it says they gathered at the entrance to the tent. Shouldn't we assume that that's where they died as well? Um, the fact uh, that the Torah didn't bother writing it there, but the fact that the Torah says here that El Azar is commanded... It's only commanded to remove the Mastor from the area, but it doesn't say where. Uh, but it does say in verse 3, they, they brought it before God. The code language for the inside the Mishkan or in the Kodesh per se is often this term is used, so the word indicates the, of the holiest places before God, if it would be the Kodesh or Kodesh and Yom Kippur, but on every day the Kodesh. So I think the Lifnei Hashem is an indication that it's in the Kodesh and that's where they were burnt. Yes. Question two. Uh, yeah, the second question is, uh, we said previously that the mahtot became like impure. But the mahtot became yeah. uh, being used to, very nice. So can't we say maybe that it didn't? That it's not that they became impure, but rather not, we didn't say impure. They became profane. profane. The opposite of holy, kodesh, chol. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. So couldn't that mean maybe not that they became? We'll say uh, you're saying profane. So uh, so not that they became profane, but rather that their purpose was changed. That they were no longer the, oh. because we said that the kalim has to be it has to be for a certain purpose. So their purpose That's right, and they profaned it. They profaned that purpose, but the object itself is no longer. It's not profane in of itself. It's profane for that purpose. It has a new purpose. So uh, how uh, can an object to 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 answer or begin to reply to your good question? How can a profaned, a desecrated uh, object, in this case the metal, how can it turn around and be made holy? One of the mat matters is beating it. I'm sorry, I woke you up. Changing the, the structure, changing the, the material. Once you make a shinoi, a change, then it's, it's a new object. It's not the same object. And therefore, it can now have holiness. Do you understand, gentlemen? In virtue of your question, something I didn't think of when I was learning it, but now it's coming to my mind. If you do make a shinoi, a change in it, uh, then it's a new situation. We see this in many laws in Shabbat, in, in the laws of stealing. If you make a shinoi, you make an inquiry. It's a new situation. And by lirakeot, I'm beating it, you're changing the metal, and therefore it's no longer un, uh, what's the word? unholy, now becomes holy. Other questions in the back. Renan, you wanted to say something? Amos. <laughs> Raphael is his name. Raphael. The, the, how can our, uh, how can Eleazar is a is a Kohen touch something unclean? And, uh, so I think the, he 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 corrected himself. It's not impure. But you know what? You're th asking excellent question. I didn't think of it. Lechora, the dead people that are holding on. To the machtot, maybe becomes impure. You don't. You know what? I don't know. Uh, I'm far away from knowing the laws of Tuman Tara. It's, it's it's seder number six of the six words that we hardly learn and we hardly deal with. I'm interested in asking Tamidech uh, Chachamim: Are these machtot also tame because they were in contact with people that were now dead, and now the impurities passed on to the machtot? And if so, how can Elazar touch it? Elazar is a coin. He's commanded. Not to become to me. Maybe there's no other choice. You're not going to send a Levi into the Kodesh. You're not going to send a Yisrael into the Kodesh. It's off grounds where they're not allowed to be there. So maybe uh, this mitzvah has to be done by doing an Avera. That's an interesting question. I'd like to ask the, the Rishonim, I don't think, are dealing with this. You have to look up some of the Yachron and the later ones. It's a good question. What, sir? They became profane, so Kadeshu. can't also mean that they just became holy in a different way? Uh, there are some commentators. What I'm telling you is unique by the Nitziv of Elijah. I didn't get to see some others. Uh, it could be, but the question still stands. What you originally asked, 
that Amos is now taking uh, point, and that is maybe they are Tume. How do you deal with Tuma in the Kodesh? Kodesh could mean that everything there, the fire purified everything. Ah, maybe. Maybe. Yes, uh, Asher. Would it be the same thing as when the Kohen Gadol goes inside a, a Kodesh Kodesh and they are not good enough and they... He dies. And they have to pull it up. Then he has to come so he's to referring to a Mishnah Mesechet Yoma yes, that so. Kohenim in the second temple period time when we didn't have really good legitimate Kohenim tied to their feet was a long rope that if in the middle of the holy activities on Yom Kippur, if they would die, we would yank, yank them out of there. Yeah, Tug of war. I think it's the same thing. Okay, it could be, could be. It, yes, Amos. When the sons of the Aaron died, Madav and Avil. Then there was this cousin, this, they take him out, they take them out of the... Of the, the two other brothers. Two other brothers. So that's like a precedent that happened. And You're right. The same thing? So we're likely that's what's happening here, I would assume, as well. There's no other choice what to do. Tov, it's 12.15. We're going to have to stop here. Have a great day today. Gentlemen, you're asking beautiful questions. And we'll continue this tomorrow, God willing, the next